we have a fairly large group, and I'm probably we're, we're going to break up the group and continue some of the work that was done on partnerships in the first and dodging the memory hole last November. But since we had Brian here today, I thought we'd talk, explore a little bit more about this public-private partnership stuff. Um, you touched on <coughs> some of your ideas uh, uh, at, at the end of your talk, and I thought we could maybe explore those a little bit more about what, uh, in particular, say, uh, a news organization like yours, a uh, broadcaster, um, what kind of value uh, we might be able to add to that equation. Um, and I guess, so one of the things I'm thinking about in the, in the survey that we did at RJI, we asked, now this was newspapers, but I'm assuming there may be you know, some similarities here. Uh, what's the value of your archive to the quality of your journalism product? Okay. In other words, go, being able to go back and look at what's been done or what exactly happened five years ago, 10 years ago, yeah. what does that add to your uh, to the value of your product. Okay, so um, I'll make this observation about that. You know, I mean, just recently for us, the ability to access previous videotape shot, right, or digital tape, yeah. let's say, so it, it has become available, all right? Kind of heretofore, it was photographers and reporters with a desk drawer of cassette videotapes. And, no. maybe, and maybe separately, right? Two different tracks maybe? The uh, video be. over here and the it, it, reporter's notes and everything or whatever they've written. No, absolutely, right. And it was, it was reporter's recall working with their photographer or whatever photographer they were assigned to that day on remember when we shot this. And, you know, like all of us, some of us are, well, maybe in this crowd it's not like all of us, but most of us don't have the, you know, the index, indexing or organization skills, right? So it's just wherever it may be, and some reporters are better at that than others. And it was really pulling things out of drawers like that, you know? So, um, uh, so, so that's evolved, and, I, and I'll also bring up, let me, what was your question specifically? So, <clears throat> what value? Yeah, what value? Have, right, do right. these assets have, if, okay. if you can access them? Okay. So, yeah. If you can't access them, they're not very valuable. So, well, they're paperweights, right? Yeah. And you're going to pick up. I just kind of think this way. This way. So, okay. how I would position that, though, is today in Dallas Fort Worth, there are um, four owned and operated network stations doing news. All right. Um, we all do a pretty good job of that. We are at parity. The stations are always trying to break out, right, to get more viewership to your station. So what's a way to differentiate that? And to me, one way to differentiate that is to be able to go back and give context to the stories of today with the stories of the past, right? And that would be a major selling point to me. You know, it was mentioned earlier, Texas has a very strong, um, Texas Association of Broadcasters, a very strong trade organization um, in Texas amongst broadcasters. I honestly don't know what the press, what, what the uh, press association is in Texas, how that's set up. Um, my point being that, and again, we got accessibility to those log books I was telling you about because UNT digitized them, you know, and they'd be able, I mean, it's amazing for us to just be able to go on and search what we can now in our logbooks. So, so the, the reason that you can now do that is that you have a system, a computerized system that contains all that um, for you. The reason we can do it is because the University of North Texas has it. And I can go on the portal well, Texas. And I'm thinking about also your digital, but now you're with your digital, born digital stuff, you've captured digitally. Yes. It's going into a system and... It's Grass Valley Stratus, for any of you who might know that system. It's a Grass Valley Stratus it's, system. It's a media it's asset management system. Media asset management system. We've hired established positions we call asset management, not that. Media managers, mm -hmm. call media managers, kind of, um, I, yeah, I call them 
thinking IT people, if you will. <laughs> you know, they're able. I to, love it. <coughs> sorry. Well, no, it's. I mean, it's just. A, it's kind of a hybrid <coughs> position where they yeah. have to demonstrate to us they have a sense of news and importance and things like this, and you know, and, and keep keep things if it, straight if, on the surface. If server. it didn't rile up the IT people, I would take that label and okay. spread it around. Okay. It's not that they don't. Uh, IT people. Not don't not think, thinking. But, that's, that's not fair. Man. Um, they may not. News, IT, people IT people with a new sense may not have been, you know, specialized in the idea of creating value from information, which is that's basically one of the things you're in business to do. And they have a high degree of interaction with reporters, with the editorial people. That's the other thing that distinguishes them. Maybe. So are those those are new positions. Those are new positions with this asset management system that we have in place. Yeah. We created those positions. Yeah. So, um, with that, then the, those, those, uh, the background story, the backstory, would those be broadcast or would they be online or? Oh, but they'd be both. Both. I mean, yeah, we're moving um, increasingly towards online. We have eight people at the station dedicated to our online um, product, but then as an extension of that, there is a small New York staff, and we call upon the other 10 home stations really to contribute right from the other markets. So that's, you know, that's all available through our site. Yeah. So, David, I guess a quick question. Yeah. Uh, how, do your reporters find themselves having to um, retrain somewhat to take into account that they now have archival material at their disposal when creating stories? I mean, is that a learning yeah. curve, or that's something that some are having to kind of bring into their skill set that wasn't there before? I see that. I see that. And I understand I'm not strictly on the editorial side. I mean, I'm not on the editorial side, right? But I'm with working with the systems and with news management. I mean, I think, again, to my point, I mean, you, you know, we have reporters of all different types, and some of them understand um, the value of going back and getting context and knowing I'll tell you, it was interesting. So when we had the videotape that we were donating to the University of North Texas, um, there's all, well, you can't do that. You know, I mean, it's going to be 30 miles away. It's not going to be digitized immediately. How am I going to get that, right? So I said, okay, let's think about this. And over a period of time, I tracked how frequently <laughs> Reporters went back <laughs> and pulled videotape. And I used the chief editor and I said, we're just going to set this up and show me. And what they showed me was, you really don't need this videotape too close. You know? um, and I worked into the agreement how we can retrieve it. But I said, all right, it's going to leave such and such a date. Bring me the stuff that you need digitized, right? That you, that you know you need digitized. And it was fascinating. I mean, some reporters brought me a whole box of, you know, small cassette. Um, I just lost the format name, but um, the format, you know, in the small cassettes. Others brought me a handful. All right. So I mean, that's kind of the different thinking there in terms of reporters. And I digitized all that stuff, right? And said, so all right. So now that's in our system. You've got that. Um, and that's that's how we did that. And then I also hired. Um, some former producers who we actually went back and looked at top stories through the decades with both local newspapers, Dallas Morning News and Star-Telegram, and they ferreted out that material of our videotape, and we digitized that up front before it went to UNT. Um, I don't know if I'm answering questions. Or so, yeah, that's good. sure. I guess maybe I should preface this. I wanted to jump right into uh, this with Brian uh, with the idea that, um, you know, my concept <clears throat> of approaching people in partnerships is that I want to come to them with something that I can offer. That if I go to them with the attitude of what can you give me, that may not be a successful approach in my experience. Maybe. I mean, you may have some, some people that are very generous, but um, so what is it? What is it that we, as memory institutions or digital preservationists, what, what are the things that we can 
offer to, uh, you know, from, from, I'm assuming most of us from the public side, but it works for private too, you have to have an offering. You have to have a, a value proposition that addresses some need that the other person or other company has. So that's why I'm trying to explore this with Brian, is like, what is your pain? Let me know, what, <laughs> where does this hurt? And is there a way that um, information science or the, the stuff that we've learned can help you relieve that pain or maybe even bring you some happiness? Like, <laughs> make oh, your wow. life easier, uh, mm -hmm. make your product better. Yeah, I don't ask for happiness, just relieving pain is enough. Relieving pain is enough. Gen genuine. Yeah, it's Create a, some happiness. It's a journal. Well, no, and that's what I was trying to get at really in my presentation. I mean, you know, that's what is the value proposition for those people that you want to approach? Um, there, was, there was a gentleman, he was, uh, he has just walked into the room. He said, he said to me, the reason, right? <laughs> he, he said, you want to know the reason we don't knock on your door is because we're scared of you, you know? Yes. I, yes. I did take that personally, I'm not sure. I, I, yes. I didn't give him an opportunity to uh, expound upon that. But, um, but, uh, but you also had some apprehension, apprehension going to this academic institution, and I'm thinking, well, why? Well, what did, it's what you don't know, yeah, right? Right. Yeah, right? It's what you don't know. I mean, NBC said to me, don't give up the copyright. And I'm like, ah, game's over, you know? There's, that's, what am I gonna do? But it's what you don't know is right. it, that you fear, so. You, you also told me <clears throat> that during this process where you were considering where should these archives go, that, I'm trying to remember, your, I don't remember the exact wording, but I think you said they, that UNT had an appropriate level of assertiveness yeah. or, or, you know. Yeah, well that's that it, I mean. So their approach was successful because they didn't. They didn't give up. Give up, right. They didn't give up and I, I'm telling you, they brought me in and again, it's a simple thing, but I, you see them digitizing, and I'm a map guy, I love maps. You see them digitizing, you know, 19th century Texas maps um, and you're saying, wow, they obviously value this stuff. They have the technology to do this and understand the precision necessary, if you will. They can handle our scripts, right. you know, and that was tangible. I mean, they took me in there and they showed me that. They didn't just talk about it. Other folks were like, oh, yes, we knew that. And how did that happen? How did you get there? There was a Initially, I got there because they had an event celebrating the millionth, uh, dig mil millionth newspaper page that they digitized for and you, the portal. And you got invited? or you I got was, invited. It was just okay. a, it was in the library, a reception. It was quite informal. You know, Martin spoke. And yeah. then they gave tours of the library to small groups. I think Jim just disappeared. I, I, it's got a, there's a very interesting backstory about the Denver Public Library and how that connection was made between the Denver Public Library and the uh, Rocky Mountain News. But right, maybe, okay. may, if he comes back, otherwise I'll tell you what it is. Okay. It's better if he tells us. So, in terms of, of a value proposition, um, uh, well, first of all, the first, first thing was, I guess, point here was that you had contact with people from UNT that, and you reached out to them, or? No, so I got to okay. them through, um, a, 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 again, it was the executive director of the Eamon Carter Foundation. Right. Because it was, in my theory, it was, my thought it was Mr. Carter's material that we had in our basement. Um, just it, it would be appropriate for me to say something to the foundation that we were getting ready to do something with this. And that foundation had funded programs at the UNT library. So he said, I think you ought to talk to the UNT library. And I'll tell you, interestingly, he has very close ties with TCU, which um, TCU, major academic institution there in Fort Worth, in Dallas, Fort Worth, and, and uh, I would have totally expected him to say, you know, we've got to take this over to yeah. TCU or whatever. And I brought up TCU. And he said, for whatever reason, he said, I, I just, I feel good about this UNT project that they're doing with the portal. <coughs> and that's how we got there. So, I, I talked to TCU. But there, there was some comfort level you, you had 
by that endorsement. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when I say appropriately aggressive is a term I use, uh, right. yeah, appropriately aggressive, I mean, they just, UNT stayed on the project, and every time I spoke with them, they brought back a little more. I mean, they were clearly looking at what's Brian's situation. We're, we're building a new building at the same time, or a 75,000 square foot building, <laughs> and thinking about moving everybody there and bringing in new content management systems and things like this. So there was a lot you know, on our plate. Yeah. And they were aware of that. Um, and they kept bringing solutions. So, <clears throat> would you have been interested if, uh, this is a theoretical, so hypothetical, would you have been interested in visiting the library, you know, five years before this, or before this move was on your radar? I'm just thinking, sometimes it's just, well, you have to, you, you, you can't do it just one time. Yeah, you know, you have to be out there making touch with people so that the t so that when their timing is right, you're there, right? Yeah. So, and it, it's also partly a, the type of person in your background, you know. And, and and I didn't mention this, but I actually started in the business in newspaper. I was oh. hired in high school by the Patriot News Company in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, and I've been news junkie at heart, so that's kind of my background. And then, so. For what it's worth, I'll, I'll shed this light on you. So I wrote a column as a high schooler for the Patriot News Company. It's called Carriers in the News. This was a thing they had all going. And it was back when kids threw newspapers. So I write on their birthday, you know, things like this, or carrier contests. So all those get archived, I find out, in the Pennsylvania State Library, which is this huge, monolithic, really cool-looking building. So I take my daughter back there a number of years ago. With the idea I'm going to show her what dad did, you know. She was not too impressed, <laughs> but I was really impressed that I could find well, my column find with a little picture on it, yeah, 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 in that library. So I'm all, I've always been big on that, uh, on libraries and preserving and things like that. So, so it's a combination of it's the right combination. person, the right time, the right opportunity. Yeah, that, you know, that's part of it. But there are others out there, like, I'm telling you, you can, you can solve a problem for people. You can solve a problem for for so should we, what should it's, we, what should we be doing to reach out to broadcasters? And I also wanted to kind of touch on the, that, I don't know if there's a firm line, but there's, there's a fair amount of stratification between the newspapers, yeah. radio, television, yeah, and and you guys kind of stick together. You have your own channels of communication. Don't and, and, and so information doesn't necessarily get shared back and forth. Brian, Maybe that's going to change. Can you hold on a minute? Brian, would you agree that how many people are aware of the problem? How many people are just, they're aware of it, but they're ostriches? How many people of your, and broadly, I mean, I'm sort of asking you to represent journalism across North America, and that's not fair, but I mean, how much? What situation would we be going into? Um, so I, I <laughs> you mean, know what it, I mean? Yeah, it, I think it's a relative, I think people are very focused um, now like said, on new content there. management systems yeah. and the value of preserving today for tomorrow. They are. Right? I think that's, yes, okay. I think that's um, high on the agenda. Okay. All right, looking back, you know, at the film in the basement, yeah. I think okay. is more difficult. There's fewer of us, you know, okay. and you really have to ferret that out. Um, uh, the, the other observation, I keep saying you can solve a problem for us. It, it may, it's not necessarily the whole problem. I mean, it's, yeah, not the, right. it's not the film digitization to online available for everybody. It's certain problems. You know. So which problem, I mean, and it depends which problem we want to solve. I mean, I think that's really the issue, not trying to solve. True. Every For me, one the small the problem was, again, digitizing the logbooks, right? Mm -hmm. So that they're searchable, so right. I can at least know what tape to call for yeah. at UNT. That's kind of the small problem that, you know, like I said, I envisioned An a high schooler. Okay. Yeah. The FedEx store, the you know down the street, doing this, not you and not university archives or not a university librarian. Which so is you, great. You needed access yeah. to your collection, 
and you needed that done in a trustworthy yeah. way, right? Yeah. That you felt comfortable with. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, and so yes, yeah, it so could be that, that there's a bunch of different things, and we, what we need to do is reach yeah, out and yeah. find out what what are the you know yeah. other needs out there. Yeah, and so to your question initially, so I mean, I'm started as a newspaper guy, and I love newspapers. I, I just really have followed them all along. You know, um, I made a conscious decision. I actually got sidetracked in business. Uh, I was working in the oil and gas business and uh, got a master's degree and wanted to get back into news somehow. And for whatever reason at that time, I looked at both businesses and I said to myself, this broadcasting is really a good business. <laughs> you know, the model, the margins, and things like that. And that's why I got into that. And I've always been kind of on the business side. Um, uh, and now, I mean, newspapers tend to look down upon local television, say, well, any television, you know, um, not just local. Uh, we but, but you did work in newspapers, so you you elevated your position. I think. I, I, that's what I tried to do before I'm I went teasing, into this. Here. Yeah. Um, so um, no, that exists. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the great moments to me in the past uh, it's in the past couple of years. So I have relationships with newspaper reporters in Dallas Fort Worth, Star Telegram, and the uh, Dallas Morning News, the Fort Worth Business Press, and um, Dallas Business Journal. So I talk to them regularly. I get a call, and, or no, no, I was making a call, I was trying to get some coverage for something we were doing. And I'm talking to him, and this reporter says to me, Brian, can you send me some video of that? He says, you know, people really like to see movie pictures with this stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a whole deal. So he was looking for video for the website. Yeah. for his story. Yeah. And he's asking me if I can send him video. Uh -huh. you know, that was a huge aha moment for me. It's like, well, maybe they're finally getting it you know, yeah. right. on the newspaper side. So Maybe. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I think we'll, we're, we're going to now review some of the work done. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's really great. I told Brian, it's really great to have people you know, that are working in the industry, the content creators, uh, journalistic mm -hmm. organizations. We need to hear, I think, more. We need to, to make sure those people uh, are invited and uh, that we listen to what they have to say.